and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is James Just. With me today is Mr. John Cameron. You know, John, this has been an interesting last few weeks with all kinds of uh, political machinations running around, right? I think is a good way to describe it. And it doesn't stop because Joe Biden's trying to uh, save the mail-in ballot, so we say, mm. right? There's a lot of questions about the uh, legitimacy of mail-in ballots, the mm -hmm. security of mail-in ballots, and my personal, mm -hmm. my personal favorite the of- The accuracy of mail-in ballots. The accuracy. I just complain about the cost and time. Yeah. It takes so long and costs so much just to mail, right? Just to mail the ballots. And especially to all those dead people, because then you gotta, you know, you gotta go down to the graveyard and dig them up so that they can fill it out and send it back and, yeah. Well, it costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. Especially if only 30%, 40% of the people are actually voting. Mm. So you're sending a lot of mail, but mail ballots out there that aren't being used. Mm. It's a, uh, Except for me, I use them like three, four times. You know. Yeah. <laughs> John, you shouldn't say that on air because no, someone I, might take you seriously. I don't, but they wouldn't know. No, there's no way to know. Because they're, they're supposed to. Am I wrong in this? Aren't they supposed to compare the signature on the mail ballot to the one they have on record. Yes. Is that not true? That is what they're, often theoretically they, they're supposed to do. How say. often do you think they actually do that? Well, I know they never check mine because my signature is never the same twice. Yeah. yeah and, and I signed that thing, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. There's no way that my signature looks anything like it did when mm -hmm. I signed that little mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't, I'm not suggesting we, we do we go online because the people that control online are the deep state and I wouldn't trust them to, to measure the accuracy of a bowel movement. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to do about it. You know, there are people, uh, you know, during the 2020 election was, was during COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah, during, I'm sorry, the pandemic, yeah. the lockdown, the test reset, whatever you want to call it. The pandemic, all those things. Um, so, I literally <laughs> wouldn't trust those results. I mean, and not through any machination or machination. I think it's machination, but just um, and and it all goes through the post office. And bless their hearts. If you know what, if you're from the south, you know what bless your heart means. They they try, they try. <laughs> I'm still um, waiting for a. Uh tripod to show up that I bought a month ago and they shipped to post office. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's the way to go. So I don't, yeah. you know, if, if, if the, the vote is important to people, then uh, unless they're out of the country or, or bed bound, and even if they're bed bound, you know, there's enough volunteers around to get people in, in, in a car and get them somewhere. If, if the future of this country is not important to people, enough to get off their ass and get to a voting booth, I think under very rare circumstances should they, they get a pass. Or maybe just say, okay, uh, we're gonna write off, you know, whatever percentage of, of the population. But I agree, you know, it's, there's, there's just too much opportunity for skullduggery when you're not checking um, signatures when um, you can have it postmarked and be um, arrive five, six, seven days late and still count it toward the election. But how, how can they do that and at the same time report election results within hours? Well, and that's so. part of the problem, right? Is now like in Sacramento County, it takes so long to count the ballots that you don't know the results for a month. Well, we know the results in Sacramento County. We, well, we yeah, you don't much, know the exact results. Well, and if, no. if one of these yeah. if one of these races ever happened to I be mean, close. Yeah, I guarantee our results are as accurate as Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> well, Argentina might be pretty accurate these days. You mean Venezuela? Oh, Venezuela, yeah, yeah. Argentina, yeah. Venezuela, that's right, yeah. yeah. But according to New York Times, you know, Capitalism called, caused the problems in Venezuela. Well, yeah. They must have forgotten that they've had commies and socialists running the country for the last 30 well, years. Yeah, 30 years now. Yeah. And, and, and why is it that you know, it's always capitalism's fault for the failure of, of socialism, socialism yeah. for not you know, uh, trading they, with them fairly, is they, what they always complain about. They teach about. that in schools. I yeah. talk, they, they teach it in schools. But anyway, back to this. Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not saying eliminate it, but boy, uh, there's a million people in this country that would volunteer to show up at the post office and check signatures. Yeah. I'd be one of them. 
I'd be one of them. Yeah, I, I, it just it takes so long and so expensive for mail-in ballots. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that the delay and mm -hmm. the time is, mm -hmm. is actually worth it. I'm not even caring about the accuracy. I'm just from a taxpayer's perspective. Mm -hmm. It costs too. It costs too much and takes too long. And that length of time is actually, it's harmful to our democracy because mm -hmm. you wonder what are they doing during mm -hmm. that length of time. Mm -hmm. What kind of skullduggery may or may not be going on? Yeah. And even if no skullduggery is going on, you have people thinking that there might be. And oh, yeah. your perception yeah. is reality, well, right? Well, you know, if, if, uh, if uh, the, the, the Trumpster lives to, you know, actually stand for election, which I seriously doubt, um, then, and he wins, the people on the left are going to question uh, everything of course and they're they going to delay the, the the election forever and vice versa i mean the you know the people on the right are firmly convinced and rightfully so that the deep state messes with everything and they're not going to trust the results so i don't know what we're going to do it might need to be two countries uh, maybe yeah. we, we yeah. both yeah. time will tell john time will tell but we are talking about elections and now reason had an article that was discussing elon musk's election interference we'll make sure the air quotes for that election interference, right? And well, this is this is an interesting one. So, there's a there's a guy. What happened was uh, the 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 Dems, as usual, uh, like to stir up racism and and separate people by by race. So they had this like white dudes for um, Kamala or Kamala. I don't know. Kamala. Kamala. Okay. Kamala. Uh, the black women for Kamala all the rest of this and they had these this thing going on and it's blowing up twitter it, i think only like a hundred thousand people showed up so that means that um who's the guy that's on uh, joe rogan literally gets they got 250 times the attendance on his weekly show that they did for this big kickoff of this popular candidate and so it went on and they they had this uh uh thing on it um, where you could give money to support it and it went on and the thing collected money and then uh, the the website or, or its its presence on X formerly Twitter went down for a while and then it was back up and they said that's election interference and even a guy who despises Elon Musk who used to work for X says oh come on people uh, you suddenly have a hundred thousand people showing up on a platform that just existed like a couple hours ago and money's flying around. Anybody that's uh, a security and safety guy would shut that sucker down in a microsecond and make sure it was tight and, 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 and craziness wasn't going on. And they did that and brought it back up. But that's somehow election interference. So, um, well, if, if that's election interference, John, I'd hate to break it to these people about what has been happening in the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they, uh, X, Twitter, before it was X, uh, made it impossible for a standing president, a person who is in office as the president of the United States, to have a presence on any uh, social media platform. He was required to create his own. This is a president of the United States. During the same time, they had avowed, admitted terrorists maintaining a presence on it. So. If this is election interference based on that. Yes, yeah, then there's a lot of election interference going around. But they, yeah. remember, yeah, these are election people, interference. These yeah. people only care about election interference when it's happening to them. To them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or if they can use it as a sound bite for yeah. the gaslight. Yeah. A uh, gaslight sound bite. Gaslight Speaking sound bite. Yes. Is, or is, is Mr. Uh, Mr. Fields? Yeah. Mr. Fields is talking about potential uh, election interference from the. Uh, Inside White House, shall we say? A palace coup, maybe, maybe the way to describe palace that. Palace coup from those people who are obviously running everything because Biden has been incompetent, incompassmentous for yep. years. Yep. Yeah. So, so let's who's running our country? Nobody we, we elected, I'll tell you that. No, no, some staffer or some people say Oligarchs? A, 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 Jake. Past president, yeah. maybe yeah. running the well. Yeah, he's been running it from the get go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what Mr. Fields has to you say about this. See it. his hand up the back of the puppet. <laughs> All right. Let's see what Mr. Richard Fields has to say about uh, Kamala Harris's palace coup. I think he's talking already. Hi, this is Richard Fields with reports from the fields. 
Last week, I examined why Kamala Harris is manifestly unsuited to be the president of the United States. This week, let's not delve into what Seymour Hersh calls a bloodless coup, which led to Kamala's coronation as the Democratic candidate. For those of you who are unaware of the reputation of Cy Hirsch, let me bring you up to date. He exposed the My Lai massacre and cover-up during the Vietnam War and was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for this reporting. He covered Watergate for the New York Times, the secret boat bombing of Cambodia, domestic spying by the CIA, and the torture of prisoners at Abu Ghraib in Iraq. His most recent scoop was the revelation that the U.S. and Norway had collaborated to blow up the Nord Stream pipeline, which piped Russian natural gas under the Baltic Sea to Germany. The goal was to make sure Germany did not stray from the coalition opposing the Russian invasion of Ukraine. He has won a record five George Polk Awards and two National Magazine Awards, in addition to his Pulitzer. And at age 89, he has no reason to pull any punches. Hirsch often uses confidential sources and has been criticized for that, mostly by people who don't like what his reporting reveals. His honest reporting means he, is, he, he no longer has a home at the New York Times or anywhere else on the government propaganda peddling legacy media. He now writes at Substack. In his latest Substack reporting, he says, Based on information provided by a reliable confidential source, a Washington insider, that Biden stepped down from the campaign only after a phone call from former President Barack Obama. Obama is alleged to have said, here's the deal. We have Kamala's approval to invoke the 25th Amendment. The 25th Amendment can be evoked when a majority of either the principal officers of the executive departments or of such other body as Congress may by law provide. Once invoked, the vice president becomes the acting president. In short, Biden was offered the choice between being forced out in disgrace or resigning and accepting public accolades from his fellow Democrats and the legacy media. All of this came to a head because of Biden's disastrous debate performance last June. The media could no longer hide or explain away Biden's obvious mental decline. More to the point, the big money donors had zipped shut their wallets until a replacement for Biden was found. Biden's decline in polling, along with Kamala holding steady in polling, cemented the party's determination to dump Biden. The game is not over yet, of course. Among her many negative attributes, Kamala is reputed to be a bad boss to her staff, and she appears to be lazy. According to Hirsch, Kamala apparently doesn't feel the need to read the president's daily brief, the highly classified summary of intelligence prepared overnight by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. It's delivered by hand to the president and the vice president, and is supposed to be read in the presence of the delivering intelligence officer. Harris expressed disinterest in reading the document and at one point asked that it no longer be delivered to her. That's a bit of a snub to the deep state agents who are responsible for stage managing her apparently successful coup. The deep state, that is our 17 or 18 intelligence agencies, do not like being ignored. If elected, Kamala will be well advised to at least pretend to read her president's daily brief. I'm Richard Fields, and that's this week's Report from the Fields. See you again next week. Thank you, Richard. That is, uh, as always, it's an insightful um, approach to, mm -hmm. to these issues, right? Yeah, I, I, I love... Uh Richard's reports from the field, yeah, especially on the palace coup. Um, that's uh, I'm I I'm aghast that the uh, that even those who uh, the status the uh, the people who who love to have somebody else in charge of their lives 
aren't uh, more upset that they don't have really any input into who's going to be running for president for their party. I mean, I would, uh, I certainly don't like the guy that, and I'm not a Republican, folks, um, that the, that the, the, the former Republicans are running, because they're not Republicans now, but, you know, at least the people chose them pretty dramatically. So, yeah. yeah. Wrong or right. But anyway, I, I want to offer a suggestion to our, our hardcore libertarian um, uh, viewers, the thousands out there that watch the show regularly, about how to, because I, I was getting a little upset about this stuff, and I finally developed this approach. What I do whenever I start to get upset about this stuff is I just remember that we're actually, uh, visualize this, you're being forced to attend a theater. You, you, you can't not go, you must go. You're paying a fortune to be in that theater. Uh, whether you want to or not, and you are being forced to watch uh, bad comedy, sometimes intentional, sometimes unintentional, bad drama, sometimes intentional, unintentional, and they flip-flop, and the actors are terrible, and the plots are horrible, and uh, it's nothing that you would choose to pay money for, but you might as well enjoy the show. <laughs> That's it. Right there. You might as well. Show. Might yes. as well enjoy the show. Because as the Chinese curse goes, may you live in interesting times. All right, so didn't mean to sidetrack. No, we're all good, John. We are living in interesting times. And it's gonna, we're going to kind of move on to some of the rest of these topics. Um, France's infrastructure is in trouble, right? It yeah. has routine attacks yeah. from... From uh, right down from what street hooligans who are arguing about oh, the, being tracked, mm. right? Or the, the the in France they're famous for ripping down uh, cameras, mm. street speed as, cameras. As well they should. As well they should. Yeah, yeah. And so, but what there there's an article in Reason, oddly enough, that highlights the modern world's vulnerability, mm. right? If if some dude with a spray can or or a plastic bag can can essentially remove all your your uh, your ability to what, track your congestion charging or whatever mm -hmm. whatever thing it is you're trying to do mm -hmm. if some dude with a spray can or a can of foam mm -hmm. you know spray foam not that i would suggest anybody mm -hmm. take a can of spray foam and put it into a, a speed camera or something no mm -hmm. i would never suggest you mm -hmm. do yeah. that no, no. but because that would be conspiracy in its 10 years yeah, yeah. 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 So, well if you chatted with a person about it i don't think suggesting it is well, I'm not uh, even well i mean there's, lo there's lots of well in france I mean, I mean, just look what, uh, you know, the consensus now is that Norway and the U.S. colluded to blow up the pipeline that was delivering natural gas to uh, uh, Europe. Didn't take much to do that. Team of divers, you know, the boats to keep people away so, you know, people wouldn't get hurt. But in France, you know, they had high-speed rail. All people did was light some fires, took down the ability of a uh, quarter million people to move about, especially to and from the Olympics. Um, Somebody basically cut with a with a you know pen knife probably some internet cable uh, and took down um, stuff uh, you know that that uh, strike um, software update that went wrong took down the whole world uh, yeah. and within hours Elon removed it from every device under his control so you know he's not gonna he's gonna do that again so we have um, we have here a very precarious power structure. And occasionally a station will go down and bring down the hole. And there's been movies about it, you know, like um, um, I forget the name of the movies. But well, if we're we're vulnerable because of the technology. And if a thousand people took out their high-powered rifles and targeted uh, some uh, electrical substations in this country, um, which that's really all it would take, we most of the country would be without power for a month. So, <laughs> decentralized grid, a little safe nuclear power plant in every community. I mean, you know, I mean, there are ways to get around this stuff. Gas-powered cars, you know. Yeah, don't be dependent on, you know, mass transit because if the mass transit goes down, guess yeah, what? Yeah, You're stuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got no work, no way to get around. Yeah. And let's not mention, you know, uh, Hamas took advantage of, of Israel relying on 5G cell towers. Mm -hmm. They took out the cell tower and blinded, essentially blinded the Israel defense. Yeah. So we we are we have set ourselves up. Oh yeah. Well, and, and we rely on GPS, and there was a low power GPS alternative that they decided to not continue. It cost a whole thirty million dollars a year to maintain. The Navy decided not to do it. Uh, in 
in the Ukraine-Russia conflict. The, um, the uh, uh, Russians are uh, doing massive electronic interference, so the GPS that controls all the smart bombs doesn't work, and the GPS that controls the drones doesn't work. And then when they attack with their drones, they pull it down, and the Ukrainians put up their interference. So, um, you yeah. know, this stuff is technology. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny how kind of analog technology can defeat all this digital technology. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, it's like in, in spy circles, yeah. you know, like non, no tech defeats high tech every single time. And it's not just in this, in, in terms of... Uh, the vulnerability isn't just in terms of active action. We've had a school district has gone back to diesel buses mm -hmm. after they tried to change their fleet in, into electric buses. Well, these buses are unreliable. They don't go as long as they want to. And their frames have a tendency to crack because they're so heavy. And, and they can't deliver them on time. And they break down, is it 300 times? And the cost of these buses was $136 million for like 80 electric buses. And this is in, uh, is it in Delaware or Maryland? It's one of the, the, the deep, where all the people that work for the deep state, after they suck the money out of DC, they go live in luxury compounds. That's there. And if anybody's got the money for this, it's those folks. Yeah. And because it didn't work, they had to go out and buy a fleet of diesel, diesel buses uh, to replace the electric buses that didn't work. And this is happening all over the place. If we get, if we get time to talk about something else like that, um, you know, that, uh, failing technology, I'd love to, about wind power. Yeah, well, that's next on the list. But, okay. you know, in, in some place like Arizona, where it's, you know, the land is flat, you don't have a lot of cold weather, maybe you mm -hmm. can make the buses work. Mm -hmm. But anytime you've got mountains, cold weather, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you, you're, you're gonna run into trouble with these electric vehicles, you just are. You notice a lot of these real rich folks in the Bay Area also have somewhere a gas-powered SUV that they use to drive up to Tahoe to go skiing because they know when they get their Tesla S halfway up there it's going to go Ugh. yeah and they don't want and they don't want to stop for 45 minutes to charge it all the way back up yeah or wait in line while they wait so they can charge it back no, up I yeah. can't even have their minions do it no yeah. yeah all right so we did want to come on John we talked about uh, breaking wind there is a there was an article on I actually didn't get a chance to read this one, John, so you're going to have to break them uh, in. Substack, could you not get through the paywall? No, I just didn't have time. Okay, all right. So there's sub, so on Substack, if you're not familiar with it, uh, folks, I don't see a live camera. I'm sure we got one. Yeah. Oh, certainly. there it is. Uh, there's a, a, a bunch of uh, good uh, reporting going on, people that either can't or won't or were laid off from newspapers, some great scientists, all the rest of that. And uh, I don't know if we have this. Do we have this stuff up, up on the website afterwards? We should. It, it will yeah. be eventually. Yeah. Well, anyway, so there's there's a gentleman that's a a uh, uh, an authority, worldwide authority on um, um, basically. Uh, well, in this case, it was a news story. So uh, off the coast of Nantucket, they put up these huge, uh, basically windmills with with uh, turbines that are as long as a football field and weigh, I think. 50 tons or something. They're basically uh, um, they, they ignored EPA rules to do this stuff in an area where the right whale population lives and they basically exterminated the right whale population. If you tried to do that with a nuclear power plant, you'd be in prison and shot before a firing squad. So one of these um, things just broke the other day. Uh, it was provided by a subcontractor, I think uh, GE, it just went poof, broke. And, and uh, this is plastic that you can't, uh, um, you can't recycle. And it fell into the ocean, in the shipping lanes, in the fishing lanes. And the people that ran it didn't inform anybody till two days later. So all sorts of people riding their boats around, it's just luck they didn't get killed. Started washing up on shore. They had to close all the beaches to fix it. And this was in no weather whatsoever. I don't know if you folks are familiar with these little things called hurricanes, but every once in a while, they hit that part of the coast. So you've got unproven technology, because these things are way bigger than anybody that's put on the seafloor, uh, basically through skullduggery and bribes and money passing back and forth. And um, they're, <laughs> 
They can't deliver the product. The product's 50% uh, more than they said. The undersea cables carrying the power are undependable. They're killing off the right whale population. And, and the same company that's doing this has a whole bunch of wind farms in Oklahoma that Oklahoma is suing them over because they don't work, they break, they fall apart, they don't do what they promised, all the rest of that. My, my friend who's a meteorologist calls them tax farms, not wind farms. Yeah, so, that's, and that's what just, it's really about. That's just one of them. Altamont Pass, I'll say it again, how many times have I said it on the show? Altamont Pass has killed 1,000 golden eagles. That's one tax farm. So uh, this stuff, it's, it's without the tax subsidies and all the rest of that, there wouldn't be one of those towers standing. So I have, we've got a, maybe two minutes, John, so let me ask you a question. Why does this climate misinformation persist? Why do people think these wind farms and whatnot are, are climate friendly mm -hmm. when you're, they're really just pushing, making a different kind of bad, so uh, we say? Well, it's um, the people that accept the, the, um, um, the fact that uh, man-made carbon is going to do ruinous things to the planet realize that it's, it's not, it's so important to stop people from doing it, but they lie, basically. And then, and they agree to lie um, about the dangers of like more hurricanes um, because of uh, quote unquote climate change and the intensity being more. And the IPCC, which is the United Nations, or the commie green capital of the world has said that's just not the case. Uh, whenever um, actuarial people from uh, insurance companies who are the smartest statisticians in the world because their bonuses and livelihoods depend on it um, uh, get together, they say, no, the reason that, that you're having all these costly uh, calamities is not because that the calamities are increasing, but the cost of what's being what's in place is more and the cost of repairs are more and there's more people there so that stuff just gets repeated and repeated and repeated because these people think that in order to convince people the problem is serious they need to lie about it and then it just gets repeated to the point where it's accepted as conventional wisdom and nobody can call them on it because you can't get a peer-reviewed study done that um, Well, you can't get a study funded, You right? can't get funded. And when the funding, people who do give the funding, right, if the oil company gives you funding, mm -hmm. no one's going to pay attention to your, to your research because they're going to say, oh, well, it's been tainted by oil money. Oh, yeah. Well, this is tainted by wind money. Tainted by wind money, tainted by government Politics. grant money, tainted by everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the one thing we know about science in the last few years, right, mm -hmm. is the that last. Yeah, peer review is the greatest scientific failure of the last hundred years. It's an experiment that did not work. Yeah, well, original peer review worked. It's this modern peer review doesn't work. Yeah. It's the old peer review where you send it out to a couple people who disagreed with you, a couple people who agreed with you. Yeah. They go and do the study. They send your, it back to check you. Check your to data. Take. If they couldn't duplicate your study, then yeah. it didn't get it didn't get posted. Yeah, and they'd yeah. send stuff back to you anyway. I think we're just about out of time, John. I want to thank you for being here with us tonight. I want to thank you for, for watching us. Please remember to love everybody and have a good night. You can love them. You can love them. You can love them.